Motor City Sports Talk in the building. Ed Stefanowski talks about um, what's important, the most important thing for the offseason for the Detroit Pistons. And um, I got a couple of Piston videos coming. Um, so let's talk about it. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. I put the free press article in the description. And um, he said the most important thing um, for the Pistons is the draft. You know, one thing that, you know, I think most of us have realized that since the lottery era or may have not realized the Pistons have never moved up with their own pick. You know what I'm saying? They either moved down or stayed the same. So if they got the, if they projected to have a fifth pick this year, that's probably what they're going to have. And like I said, the, the league never wanted the Pistons to, to be nothing. Certain markets, the league don't want to be winners. Atlanta, Indiana, Milwaukee, that's why they moved Kareem to LA. I mean, in certain markets where they don't want teams to win, Oklahoma City, New Orleans, Charlotte, they don't want those teams, really didn't want San Antonio to be in the, uh, in the uh, championship either. They wanted to be Boston and L.A. every year, and the league is not organic. It's not even out. Tim Donahue, the old referee, told y'all it was rigged. You know, and the NBA truly is. They do. They do. That's why you get superstar calls, and, you know, this is why you get certain stars going to the free throw line more than anybody else. Isn't it supposed to be equal opportunity? You know what I'm saying? When you go, you know, in the, for a union job or you go to a regular job, everybody supposed to have equal opportunity at promotions, and everybody supposed to have equal pay and all that shit. And the NBA is not like that. And they've been they've been toying with us in the lottery forever. Now, out of all the years, could this be can this be can this be the situation where we get the number one pick? Probably so, because it's not a, a number one Zion, LeBron, or nobody like that in this draft. But uh, Ed says that basically that's the most important thing, especially with only having virtual drafts and probably not having no combine and all that stuff. That they basically got to start hitting in the draft. And I think last year with Sayoko Diambo, whatever his damn name is, I think that was a good start. You know, he is somebody down the line that's going to help the Pistons out. Um, were they going to go mess up passing on that kid from UFC last year? I think so. They should have took him. Kevin Porter, they should have easily took him last year. Don't understand why. At the end of the day, you can't sit here. Detroit want to sit here and get all choir boys. That's the Lions in the, in the Pistons. You got to take some chances on some character guys. Especially when you got high character guys coming to last season, Andre Drummond, Blake Griffin, Derrick Rose, Tony Snell. You got a great black coach and Dwayne Casey as far as communicating with uh with players. You had to trust your system to make sure Kevin Porter was gonna grow in that system. And I think they passed up on an opportunity to add a good guard to that situation. But, you know, he basically said that, you know, they in the draft and they, you know, looking for the best player available. Um, the interviewer for the Free Press asked him, you know, if a big man or a point guard, since you lost, Re you lost Reggie and Andre Drummond, are you looking to immediately replace them in a draft? And he basically said that they're looking at the best player. If the best player on the board is a big fella, they're going to take him. If the best player on the board is a good point guard, they're going to take him. And I'm not mad at that because they in ground zero right now. Derrick Rose, he talked about Derrick Rose and Blake Griffin. You can read the article. But they they not going they not cornerstones of this this uh, franchise. Even though Blake Griffin contract said he a cornerstone of this franchise, he not. The franchise is is now ground zero. But the great thing about Blake and Derrick Rose that he did mention is they gonna be some great mentors in the locker room as far as nourishing and helping players grow. They are gonna be player coaches. So they are gonna help Bruce to grow, you know, and the rest of the guys to continue to grow. And and become the best player that they can be. But to continue on, um, I think I think I think he's right. Best player available, but I just think a point guard is just so so much of an in demand and need right now for the Detroit Pistons. They haven't had a good point guard, a great point guard since Chauncey had an adequate one in Brandon Jennings, who was doing really really well till he blew his ACL out or his Achilles out. But they need a point guard, and if you got two guys rated. At the same, at the same, uh, you know, grade, you got to take the point guard. You know what I'm saying? Uh, as far, you know, and as far as the big fella going, I'm a, I'm gonna explain the Christian Wood video. I'm gonna do that video. I might do it next. I might do it. I mean, I might post it next, or I might post it first. I'm not sure. But you know, they got to do good in the draft. You know what I'm saying? They do got to do good in the draft, and I I think Stefanowski will do good in the draft. So I'm not really concerned about that. I'm kind of just concerned about the big fella prospect comment because I figured I figured they got Christian Wood. You know what's the issue? But I'll get to that in another video. 
He also talked about they uh, approached the free agency with having uh, just under forty million in cap. He said, you know, basically everything on the table. He said they might try to get a big player name, a big player, in free agency and spend that money, or you know, they may see if the big players go off the board and then try to get the next wave of players, or they may use that tr that cap space they got to trade for a big player to bring on to the team. You know, so he said basically everything is on the floor as far as you know, or everything is an option as far as free agency going. Um, the only guy I would actually pay would probably be Brandon Ingram. And I would probably max him out and try to get him to come to Detroit if he stayed in New Orleans. I mean, he stayed in New Orleans. I think he restricted too. Um, that's the only guy I really see. I wouldn't bring no Fred, Fred Van Fleet in or nothing like that. It just don't make no sense. But just because he got the money don't mean they got to spend the money. And hopefully they don't sit here and rush and try to throw another team together like Joe Dumars threw with uh with Charlie V and Ben Gordon and them Josh Smith and then rush and try to throw another team together like uh, uh Jeff Van Gundy and Jordan Bowers did with Brent Reggie and the rest of them uh and Tobias and then they brought Blake on you no know, hopefully they just let the process play out and they got guys and said we'll pay this guy if not we just you know free agency we just fill the team out and next year we just keep winning the draft but he put priority on the draft. And it's point guard heavy. The draft is guard heavy from Anthony Edwards to Cole Anthony to LaMelo Ball to Killian Hayes. They should get a really, really nice player at, at at the guard position. You know what I'm saying? They got some wings. They got some big fellas, Wiseman, OB. It's a, it's a deep draft. Now, it may not be, you know, sexy at the top. But most people say that Luka Donatich's draft probably wasn't sexy at the top. But you got Luka and Trey Young that came out. And most years, that's better than most ones and twos that come out. So, like I said before, I think it's, they got to find them a guard, man. But, it, like, it sounds like they may not bring Christian Wood back. But I'll get into that in another video. But he did talk about uh, Luke Kennard and how he progressed. He should be traded already. Luke Kennard should be bing gone. Luke Kennard should be gone. It's time for him to be gone. Um... But he talked about D Rose and Blake a little bit, you know, basically how they gonna be tutors to the game. And he gave he gave a reason why he didn't trade D Rose last year. He said they didn't get enough value for Derrick Rose and Blake Griffin should be able to come back and be healthy by, I think he said June or something like that. So they preparing for Blake to come back. They preparing to have Derrick Rose back for one more year. Um, but as far as the draft go, man, I wouldn't I wouldn't bank on the Pistons moving up in this draft. Like I said, and it ain't that funny. That the lottery been here for so long that we ain't never moved up. That the NBA just don't like Detroit. And the thing I don't understand about it is this. Why wouldn't you want a small market teams to do good? Oh, the ratings, you know, people, okay, at the end of the day, Oh, we want to see the Lakers in the Boston every year or whatever team LeBron on. Uh, look here, if they good enough to get there, they good enough to get there. If not, the same thing going to do to people in Milwaukee with Giannis. They can't get Giannis out of Milwaukee. They're going to put Milwaukee somewhere on the West Coast, Golden State, L.A. They're going to put him somewhere on the East Coast. I don't know. I don't think the Knicks are going to be a spot. They just dysfunctional. Dysfunctional. But uh, I just I just don't – I truly don't understand. I truly don't understand why – you know, the NBA just don't let let it be fair play. Like Dan Gilbert, he lost LeBron. They got two number one picks. In the year, I think they got three, like three in a row, three out of four years. Why why do they hate the Pistons so much? You can talk about the bad boys doc all you want to. The Pistons wasn't the only team being physical like that. The Lakers, the 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 Celtics was being physical. So it's a whole bunch of hogwash going on. In the NBA, they got a conspiracy against us. Every time we win the championship, they change the rules. First time we take won the championship, they put flagrant text in the rule on the game, took Rick Mahorn off the off the team. Second time we won, they start clamping down on defense. Oh, you can't be as physical no more. This, that, and the third. So, like I said before, man, don't bank on the Pistons moving up in the lottery. Um, count on them moving down. Watch what I tell you. The NBA, we we could probably file a class action lawsuit against the NBA. If we get some inside information on how they work, I think a lot of small market teams can, you know, but hey, it is what it is. Let me know what you guys think. I linked that article from the free person in the description. 
Um, don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. All the links in the description. The quickest way to reach me is Twitter. If you got business questions, quiet response, your video requests, or you just want to chop it up. Um, other than that, man, want to make a donation, cash out, PayPal. Let me know what you guys think. On to the next one. Go.